Welcome to this second video on how to use the Behringer X-Touch 1 with Cakewalk by BandLab. In the previous video we updated the X-Touch 1 firmware, it's now on version 107. And in this video we'll have a closer look at the settings both inside the X-Touch and in Cakewalk. The first setting to check is inside the X-Touch 1 itself. We have to put it on Mackie Control Standard. What we can do is press the stop button and simultaneously press the encoder. And then we, oh, maybe I best zoom in a bit so that we can see that uh, little LCD screen, hopefully, possibly. Is it uh, focused? No, it's not. Why doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. Um, we can now rotate this encoder and it will change the mode that the X-Touch 1 is going to use. Uh, we have uh, Ableton Live, Cubase, Logic and a whole lot of others. Uh, but the mode that we are going to use with Cakewalk is the Mackie Control Standard. Most probably it is already uh, the default, but you never know, it's always good to check. Now, how to get out of this uh, setting mode is to press the encoder again. We can now change the LCD contrast and we can change the LCD LED brightness, uh, as we can see over here. Uh, well, it's possible to find a setting that makes the screen readable on an angle. And with me those settings were 92 and 60 as a sort of optimum. Uh, well, I think a last press will take us out of this mode. And strangely enough, now it says it's not connected. I have to start my door again to make it reconnect. And then we are going to have a look inside Cakewalk itself, what settings we need to make over there. Alright, so now that we have confirmed that the X-Touch 1 is on Mackie control standard, let's have a look what we need to do to connect it to Cakewalk. The first thing to do is to go to the MIDI settings and those can be found in the menu Edit and then Preferences. And then over here we find the MIDI devices and we should see when we have connected the USB cable of course and have powered on the X-Touch 1. We should see it in the list and we have to set of course a tick mark for MIDI in and MIDI out. And from here on the X-Touch 1 is connected to Cakewalk. The next thing to do is the Maggie control settings. For that we go to the utilities menu Maggie control. If you have multiple units connected you probably will have multiple numbers over here. I had only one and if I click that it opens the X-Touch 1 Maggie control window. Well, it's not actually the X-Touch 1 window, it's for the X-Touch, uh, but it works the same for the X-Touch 1. Important setting over here is this protocol, put it on Mackie control. And then another setting, uh, interesting, is we can use the master fader. We have only one slider on the X-Touch 1, and you have a specific master slider on the X-Touch. But over here we can put this on bus 1 and that means if we press the master button on the X-Touch 1 uh, it will you now control the master fader. Which of course is a very nice feature. Then we have the now time control. For that we can use this jog wheel which uh, works with clicks or ticks. And over here we can set uh, how uh, much progress this uh, now time cursor makes with one tick. My personal preference was beats, but of course your personal preference may differ. Uh, I use beats over here and then the other uh, control for this uh, now time marker is this fast forward and fast backward button. 
and well i have put those on measure so i can use those for fast movements and this for the jog wheel for more precise movements another setting that can be made is what the display will show i've put that on measures beats and ticks that only uh, controls uh, what it looks like after start up because over here you have this uh, bpm or time button and if we press that it will toggle between hours minutes seconds and measures and beats and the interesting notice is it only uh, changes the display on the x touch one not the display on the cakewalk uh, screen so you can actually use both uh, views if you put cakewalk on hours minutes and seconds and this one on measures and beats then you have both of them in view which uh, can sometimes be helpful then the very important setting is this select highlights track it also puts permanently on this select uh, light and button over here what we can now do thanks to ver firmware version 107 or higher we can use the fader bank buttons over here to switch track for this fader to control uh, in steps of eight plus or minus and we can use these channel buttons to change the track plus or minus one and it also works the other way around if we click with the mouse a track uh, on the uh, cakewalk screen then it will automatically get selected here under this fader which now means that we can get to any track with this one fader on the X touch very nice okay so now we can select these tracks over here with the buttons on the X touch but how can we get to our buses that we have over here which uh, of which the master is with me over here bus number one that setting we already made but how can i control with my fader these other buses well that can also be done uh, by using this setting over here use the scrub and bank up down buttons both of them at the same time to select buses and from there on we can use the channel buttons again to make a further detailed selection which bus we are controlling and then to get back to the tracks you simply press the scrub button and the back button on the fader bank that makes it possible to control buses with this same fader we also have the leds uh, for the signal strength over here and we can uh, switch them off but we can also put them on uh, yeah to show them and of course that is much nicer once you have them why not use them the x touch one has one input for a foot switch so we can also uh, only select uh, the option for switch a uh, there's a drop down and yeah most uh, obviously it, it it works nice to have the play and stop uh, on under a foot switch but there are other options and then finally there's a whole list of uh, function keys we have six of them on the x touch one uh, so only the first uh, six of these will work and what we can do is with every function key uh, there's a long 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 list of uh, yeah, possible actions that that function key should perform and what is nice that is that we also over here have this uh, save a preset possibility uh, that means that you can create a selection of function keys for different tasks if for instance right now you are mixing then it could be a nice a nice idea to have uh, a whole lot of function keys that are useful while mixing and then save them under the name mixing uh, then you can also create a set of presets uh, suppose that you are working on the piano roll to edit uh, midi data 
uh, then it can be a very nice idea to have six other presets for the function buttons uh, which are dedicated for working with the piano roll and then save it under piano roll and it is quite easy to go back to this Mackey control window uh, via the utilities and the Mackey control uh, uh, menu and then simply change your preset and all of a sudden your Xtouch one has different function keys uh, within a couple of seconds that is done so well that's of course very nice that we can have a whole range of presets and save them and reload them I think this was it um, next video we will just uh, have a look at how it works in practice. We are going to use the Xtouch one in our cakewalk uh, workflow. Maybe see you back there.